Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, City of Sioux Falls City Council meeting uh, for Monday, August 2nd, uh, tonight at 7 p.m. Can I have a roll call vote, please? A roll call, please. Council members Rolfing? Present. Aguilar? Present. Anderson? Brown? Here. Entman? Here. Erpenbach? Here. Jameson? Here. Litz? Here. Thank you, councilors, for being here tonight. We appreciate it. Uh, I am very, very pleased to uh, announce that we have Pastor Dwayne Williams here from the Friendship Baptist Church. Pastor, it's good to have you here. Thank you. Uh, he will give us all an, an invitation to help lead this uh, great city. And then after that, if you would please remain standing, we'll give a pledge uh, of allegiance as well. Thank you. Please bow your head with me. Unto thee, O God, do we come. And we come with a request that you would grant to these city leaders your wisdom, prudence, and understanding of how you would have them to proceed in governing our city, O oh God. We come to you and ask, O oh God, that you would extend your mercy and your grace to those who our uh, lives have been turned upside down by the, the flood waters that have hit our region. We come and ask, O oh God that you would let this city, Sioux Falls, be a shining beacon of what a city ought to be, O oh God. Help us to be your people in this city who exemplify character and moral and value that is pleasing in your sight, O oh God. Bless our homes. Bless our mayor, O oh God. Give him favor, Lord God, in this region and in this nation, O oh God. Bless these city council members. Lord, give them what they need to run the city effectively, Lord God. You and you alone can do it, and we trust you that you will do it. Grant us peace and joy in our community that we may serve you all of our days as your people. For we ask this in our Lord and Savior's name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to ask for a motion and a second, please, to approve the consent agenda for tonight. Mr. Mayor, could I first uh, acknowledge that Councillor uh, Anderson has arrived? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Anderson, Jr., welcome tonight. It's good to have you here. Could I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda for tonight? So move. Let's. Second, Entman. Councillor Litz and uh, Councillor Entman. I have both uh, made a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda. Any discussion on that? All those in favor, please, uh, we'll get the roll call vote, please. Council Member Rolfing? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Entman? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Litz? Aye. Thank you very much, Councilors. Uh, could I also get a motion and a second to approve tonight's regular agenda? Move to approve, Brown. Second, Anderson. <clears throat> Councilor Brown and Councilor Anderson, Jr. Uh, made the motion to approve tonight's regular agenda. Is there any uh, discussion on that? Hearing none, if I could have a roll call vote, please. Council members Rolfing? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Entman? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Blitz? Aye. Thank you. That, that passed 8 to 0. I'd like to welcome all of you to tonight's City Council meeting. Uh, this is an opportunity for all of you to get involved in your government, and that includes speaking with these uh, City Councilors uh, before you. But we would like you to come up and speak if, if you have a topic that you'd like to discuss. We just ask that the topic not be on the regular agenda and that you save that for, for a later time tonight. But if you do have a topic that's not on the, tonight's agenda, please come on up. Just give us your name. Is there anybody here who would like to speak to the City Council? Mr. Resort? 
Could you just state your name, please? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, I'm Ron Wazorik. Uh, I thank you for the opportunity to uh, be before the Honorable Mayor and members of the, of the Council, and I would like to address the issue of, uh, of our national economy. Many of our townships and our counties and our city governments are strapped for funds. And everywhere I look, I see austerity and budget cutting. And I think we need to approach it from a different aspect. I think we need to look at it from how do we expand the economy. And Lyndon LaRouche is an economist that I really uh, think quite highly of. And he has just a pro, uh, 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 laid out a program based on the Nawapa Water Project that was uh, uh, worked on clear back in the 60s to bring water from the Yukon and the, uh, the uh, Mackenzie Rivers in Alaska in a trench, uh, in a trench down through the Rockies down into Southern California, eventually feeding into the Missouri River, uh, pumping into the uh, uh, Ogallala Aquifer that would replenish uh, water for the farming in Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and a number of the southern states, which would generate a massive return to an industrial economy where we could retool the auto sector and uh, uh, put people back to work. Along with that program, we would like to tie in and, and talk about uh, a major uh, infrastructure program around maglev train transportation where following the same paths, maybe we could, we could get Alaska at least tied to the United States with train development into Sioux Falls. And then uh, looking at, uh, uh, you know, uh, eventually uh, 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 a Bering Sea tunnel to tie all the continents except for Australia together. I mean, this would be a massive uh, job creation problem or, 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 or uh, you know, uh, creation of jobs plus uplifting the spirit of our, our young people and giving our young people a future. Right now, I don't see too much future in a, you know, in a gambling a casino economy. I mean, that's a sorry mess, I think. And then cutting our budget, you know, and I'm not going to pick on you, Mayor, okay. but to cut, you know, snow removal, I don't know how you can do that. What if we have as much snow as we have rain this year? How do how do we how, you know how do we cut that kind of a budget? So we have to we you know we have to look at other aspects of what's going on. <clears throat> and I look at uh, what our federal government has done with the TARP program. I mean it's not working. I mean on Friday here comes the uh, the FDIC closing five more banks. The previous Friday they closed seven more. Uh, they put uh, uh, seventy more on the problem list from the last quarter. So now we have 70, 775 banks lined up to be closed down, commercial banks. I'm, small, I'm talking about small town commercial banks. And uh, I think we've only got like 7,900 banks in the country under the umbrella of the FDIC. That's one out of 10 banks that are going down. I mean, we've we got serious problems, people, and I think we need to address this issue. And uh, the first thing I think we have to do is, is uh, you know, create the monetary system that will make some of these major infrastructure projects happen, like uh, Roosevelt's TVA and the Three Corners Project, uh, or Four Corners Project, you know, to uh, give us energy to, to every home in America, basically. And, and what have we done since? We really haven't done anything in the last 70 years. The roads out in my area are falling apart. The township roads, I mean, they don't have the money. We need, we need to generate funds back from the federal government through our economy, and our federal government needs to take the leadership. And one of the key things that needs to be done is a return to Glass-Steagall, which was put on, on the books in 1933 and taken off the books in 1999. And I, I'm, I'm actually here almost begging you people to, to con look, at, look what Peter Norbeck done, the, the great senator from South Dakota and the great governor that gave us Rushmore, that gave us all the state parks we have out there, and his fight with Wall Street, the Wall Street robbers is what he called them, and, and his uh, uh, investigation uh, where he hired uh, Peter Pecora and opened the door. Uh, this is 1932, you know, even before Roosevelt is elected. And by the way, Norbeck's a Republican. So... Uh, he opened the door for Roosevelt to come in and shut down the banking system, get us up and going. And if he hadn't built the Missouri River Basin, we probably wouldn't even have electricity in here. 
So I, I'm really appealing to you guys to look at a resolution calling on our U.S. Congress to uh, 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 reenact Glass Steagall. And um, I have a letter here from Senator Thune, and I would just like to read. Uh, uh, a couple sentences out of there, if I may. Thank you, Mr. Rosori. If you could just keep it brief, I'd appreciate that. Yeah, Thank I, you. I, I will shut it down Thank because you. I know I'm, I'm running out of time. Thank you. But one of the amendments offered by Senator Cantwell, the Democrat from Washington, and this was in the reform bill here a few weeks ago that was passed, would have reinstated the Glass-Steagall Act, which was in effect from 1933 until the passage of the graham leach Bailey Act in 1999. These restrictions prohibit, prohibited commercial banks from participating in investment banking. And this is what's destroying our little banks. Actually, it's a looting of the small banks to, to save the big banks. In the end, I believe that this was a bill that could have enjoyed uh, uh, broad bipartisan support in the United States Senate. However, many reasonable and necessary changes were thrown to the side, and this legislation does not reflect what I believe is real reform. So a lot of our leaders are asking for support, basically, from city councils around the world, around the country, uh, 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 county commissioners, uh, townships, whatever. We need to, uh, we, you know, we need a, 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 a glass. And if I could have about a half a minute to just read uh, three real short paragraphs. Mr. Rosori, if I could, in, in the spirit of, uh, again, certainly appreciate your, your okay. commentary. Um, I think that the city council has got a good in, uh, understanding of, of where you want. Also, okay. what, what you would like them to consider in terms of a resolution to Senator Thune, Senator Johnson, maybe Representative Persis Sandlin. Uh, I, I know they'll take that into consideration. In the spirit of this is the city government, our, our impact or our influence on, of course, federal politics is more limited, but it, it, we, can, we can make a difference. Um, if, if you wouldn't mind, if, if there is a final comment that you'd like to relate to these good men and women, I, I'd appreciate it. Okay, very quickly. Um, I think I'll just uh, read something so I don't get off track, because I'm famous for getting off track. Um, and talking about the projects now, such a, such a project as, as uh, uh, the Nawapa project or, or the other uh, Maglev project, uh, will provide the opportunity for long, meaningful employment for a generation of youth which presently has no significant skill level and is otherwise uh, no future generation. This will create the jobs, the, this will create the most important resource for our nation, the development of a skilled generation of creative citizens without which so, which out, no economy will survive. This is to be understood as a, a, a unified process of development of North America. All these aspects are to be taken as a whole, a single project of development, which will create the foundations for rapid economic growth. Uh, progress will not uh, be, uh, uh, let's see, progress will be impossible otherwise. And there, and here with this program, we have the type of economic outlook upon which the recovery of the U.S. and the world economy depends. And with the proper uh, uh, legislation, they could start on one of those projects this fall yet. Sioux Falls could be the, the hub of the world for the Megalev train system. Ms. Rosorek, thanks for your passion. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Any other folks who'd like to speak to the City Council tonight, please just state your name. My name is Megan, and I'd like to address... Um, Ma Ian. Megan, could we get your last name too, please? Oh, my, name's, my last name's Tuvi. Tuvi. Thank yes. you, Megan. And um, I'm just coming to address to the city about Whittier Park. That park desperately needs to be cleaned up over there. There is all kinds of, you, I guess you could say, criminal activity that's going on there. And f as far as I know, there's no drinking allowed in that park. And people drink in that park. <coughs> they urinate in the park. Last summer, my three-year-old was almost urinated on in that park. And people in that park are having adult relations in front, in front of very small children and just using vulgar language and have no respect for our city parks, for everybody else to enjoy. They're breaking beer bottles, liquor bottles, whatever kind of glass they can break. And me and my friend have went over there several times because I live a block away from that park. My three-year-old, he loves going to the park, but I don't even take him to that park anymore because of that specific reason. 
we, me and my friend have went there ourselves to clean up glass and the mess that they leave there. And I don't think that's right to us. We all, as citizens of this country, should keep our parks and everything clean for everyone else to enjoy. And we can't even do that. And several times I've had to call the police over there because people are exposing themselves in the park and our fine men and women in uniform really don't do anything about it. Like last week I was just there with my son and there was a guy passed out there and the cops just left him there. And I mean, they drink. The police just let them leave their liquor there and drink in there. And I mean, they should have respect for everybody. I don't go over there and expose myself and urinate in the park. I mean, I just re expect that same kind of respect. And maybe there's something that you guys can do. Because, I mean, I've called the police. I mean, I don't know what else to do. You know, and we pay our taxes, so we should be able to enjoy clean parks and ha not have broken bottles and whatever and having people expose themselves. I mean, as adults, we should know better to, not to do those kinds of things, but those people that hang out in that area don't seem to understand that. And, I mean, I don't know what else to do, and hopefully you as a mayor can maybe do something for us people that do live in that area because a lot of people don't even go over there anymore. And I, I mean, there's one specific race that goes over there, and I won't say the specific race because I don't want to sound racist because by any means I'm not. But I mean, a lot of people don't even go to that park because, I mean, every time I go there with my child, some male approaches me and tries to be sexual towards me and like basically get sexually harassed in our city parks. And I don't think that's right for people to do. I don't do that to them, so I mean, they should give the same kind of respect and maybe we can keep that park cleaner and revitalize that neighborhood and make it what it was 10 years ago. So I mean, I hope you guys take that into consideration <coughs> and maybe do something about it. Councilor Litz? Uh, Megan, what park is this? This is Whittier Park on 3rd and Cliff. Very good, okay. So. But I mean, a lot of the problem stems from that tidy house laundry. They sell liquor over, well, not liquor, but they sell beer and all that kinds of stuff over there. And the people that hang out at that park hang out at that tidy house. It's like a laundromat and like a, you want to say, I guess, gas station. They go over there, purchase their alcohol, walk across the street, and go sit there in the park and drink. So. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Anderson, Jr. I, I guess I'm just really disappointed. Um, about a year and a half ago, um, Chief Bartell and I, and I believe Mike Cooper, had a discussion about that park. And um, I thought for a while there it was turning around, but I'm, I'm hearing a lot different right now. And I, I guess this is something we need to find a permanent solution. It's a very, very small park. And um, <clears throat> there was a lot of concerns about having alcohol that close to that park also. Um, there was another time where I had uh, Kadir Aware go over there and speak to uh, a lot of the people that were over in that area. And we really thought that it was going to turn around, but um, I guess it's something that we really need to pay attention to now. Councilor Litz. Uh, Mr. Mayor, maybe this is a question for our, our new city attorney, but maybe you don't know this, but is there, is there instances where we have outlawed, uh, is, is alcohol use allowed in our park system today? I believe yes, it is. It is. In, in some parks. In some parks. Okay, I believe so. the only park that I'm aware of that alcohol is allowed in is the park on 49th and Oxbow. That's the only park that I'm aware of where alcohol is Mr. allowed. Mayor. The alcohol is, as, as a member of, former member of the park board, alcohol is a, allowed in our parks unless we specifically say no. And the council has that power to ban alcohol in a park. Well, um, one specifically that comes to mind right now is Veterans Park. There's no alcohol allowed there. Um, McKenna Park is another one that's right. And um, the, the uh, neighbors at Terrace Park are working on having alcohol removed from that park as well for many of the same reasons that this young lady is talking about. Um, but if it comes from the neighbors like that, it makes it more powerful for us. I mean, it's one of those things that we absolutely should consider. Thank you for that, Councillor. That's where I was going with it. So. 
And just another tidbit real quick, there's a lot of single parents that live in that neighborhood that don't have automobiles, so they take their child there because that's the closest park within walking distance. And, I mean, I just am appalled at the way people act there. I mean, it, a lot of people don't even go there anymore. They take the city bus to take their kids to the parks because of that specific reason in that park. Councilor Edsman? There would be some occasions like we do when there's permits required for certain festivals and those kinds of things where we do permit uh, the use of, uh, of uh, adult beverages in certain parks. But there again, those are all done. Uh, in most cases, Jazz Fest, uh, Hot Harley Nights, those kinds of things are done with the support of the city and with the police department completely involved in the process. So I guess there are some of those cases where we would have to look at, but I know there are parks that you cannot have alcohol beverages. Very in. few, though, Councilor yeah. Antman. Very few have it banned. Ms. Tuve, I think you asked whether you would get or what type of reception you were going to get if you spoke your mind tonight. I think you're going to find that the City Council is appalled by what you've told them, not because of what you said, uh, because of you, but because of the, the instances that, you, that you've that expressed. Um, as the City Council will ensure that I do, I will send out an, an email to uh, uh, not only Chief Barthel, who's in charge of our police department, but also to Don Carney, who's in charge of our parts department. And I will, count, I will copy uh, all of these good men and women, and we'll follow up on that. Uh, what, you, what you've talked about is unacceptable. Uh, you're right. You shouldn't have to deal with any of that in our, in our city parks. Uh, I will ask you a favor, though. We, do need, we need more eyes and ears. Uh, as, as good as we, tr as much as we try to be proactive in policing all the things that are going on in our city, uh, we're not as effective as we would like to be. If you wouldn't mind continuing to be the eyes and ears for this city council and for me as the mayor, I, I would appreciate that. And uh, let's see if we can make a difference over there in the Whittier Park. All right, I'm confident that we can do some over there. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Councilor Litz. I would like to uh, request to this council and, and Tamara that we uh, start to draw up an ordinance that would ban alcohol in this park. And uh, we've got a little bit of time to think this over and see what, uh, what we need to do to correct it. Pardon, Pardon uh, me? Councilor, or I'm sorry, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Cooper, would you mind coming up to the podium, please? Thank you. Uh, Mike Cooper, Planning and Building Services. Kelby Maris is in the audience tonight, uh, Park Operations Manager. Whittier Park is one of the parks that currently is prohibited from the consumption of alcohol. It's a neighborhood park right next to the Whittier Track. Right. So it's been a long-standing enforcement challenge for us over the years. Question, is it posted, Kelby, can you remind us, is it, it's posted? So that puts teeth in the It's by the, the park entrance sign typically that it says no alcohol, but it's posted. Puts teeth in the enforcement then. I mean, if, if, if um, this neighbor or anyone else calls the police, there's, there, are, are, there are already teeth in the enforcement of the issues that she's talking about. Well, maybe it's time to add a little more bite to it. And uh, uh, Megan, thank you again for your commentary. We'll follow up. We'll continue to work to improve that. Sounds like we've got some work to do. Uh, you made Councillor Anderson Jr. mad, and that's a good thing. Uh, any other discussion in regards to, uh, to any? Yes, sir, please come on up to the podium. And just state your name, sir. My name is Melvin Vandentop, and uh, I, I was uh, thinking that perhaps in the spirit of the prayer earlier of, of wisdom, I might be able to lend a little bit of uh, insight to something here. Thank you. Um, the man earlier speaking about this Glass-Steagall thing, you know, what just the woman that just spoke about the park, well, it seems to me that that's just a symptom of a collapsing economy. And, uh, you know, that's not happening only in Sioux Falls, it's happening all over the country. And I sat in on an informational meeting here, I believe it was the 19th, where I listened to the city chief of police, no, chief of fire, uh, offer his... Um, offering or so to speak sacrifice for delaying a fire station for two years in the southeast section of the city and he used as reasoning to allowing him 
to concede to that, that there was not as many calls that come from that part of the city. And um, obviously there was uh, a budgetary concern that something be delayed. So I don't know if there, what studies have been done as far as newer areas of the city, how many calls they get, and as the places get older, how many more calls come from. But I'm hoping that uh, with cutting that back two years and not meeting the uh, standard of five minutes and 12 seconds for a response to an emergency, that you people are um, you know, taking extra measures to educate people to prevent fires in that area. Because uh, if we have one big disaster, well, that decision is probably going to be a painful remembrance. So um, in the spirit of uh, not wanting to see emergency services cut, I would say that perhaps um, the Roman Colosseum that we're planning to construct in the city is uh, something that should be delayed rather than um, essential services for the protection of human life and property. So since that's a bread and circuses uh, project, it would seem to me that um, you may reconsider that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else would like to speak to the City Council? Sir, just please state your name. Tim Stanga. Kenny, I want to thank you for coming over to my neighbor's house the other night. They really appreciate it and they got a lot out of it. And I just want to thank you for doing that. And to be able to see what I'm up here talking about is true, not fake. Um, I live in the Whittier neighborhood. I can remember that uh, Ted from from the uh, grocery store was coming in against letting that other outfit have a um, beverage license because of, of this same thing, being able to sell to the people that go to that uh, that uh, you know I. I it's always been a problem over there. Ever since I've lived on the east side of town, it's not going to change. Um, we seem to think that uh, we don't need more police officers in Sioux Falls. Between the crime rate that's going on right now, between thefts on houses, cars, um, graffiti around town, drugs, <laughs> underage alcohol consumption, underage uh, smokers. Um, I think that's the last thing you want to do is not have more police officers in this town. I think that the $500,000 that we're setting aside for the event center could be put towards more police officers and to be able to make this community more um, user friendly be able to be able to walk out your door without worrying about somebody doing something to your property um, I want to address the uh, the corner or the the livestock the stockyards um, the citizens of Sioux Falls have put millions of dollars to try to get the falls the way it is now <clears throat> to be able to get Phillips the way it is now. This right here should be tanked. There should be no questions asked. That shouldn't even, uh, that shouldn't even go in front of a planning. That shouldn't go nowhere other than saying, no, you better find a different place to put your, put your place. In my, in my neighborhood, we don't have cookie jars. And when we talk about cookie jars for the event center, again, as I addressed it with Kenny. In my neighborhood, people are struggling day to day. They're trying to figure out how they're going to make it from one day to the next. If this city council does not want to listen, more of our elderly are going to be pushed out of their houses. More of our elderly are going to be sitting on the street. And then we're going to try to figure out what did we do wrong, because you're not listening. 57% of the people said the event center will not happen by 2014. I believe that's going to happen. 
either we start listening to the people or people are going to lose what they have now. I'm tired of the city council. I'm tired of the mayor not listening to what the people want and what the people need. They want to be secure. They want to have jobs. And they want to be able to live. And I'm sick and tired of people throwing things down people's throats just because they have an agenda that they have to do. Last things last is uh, you read in the paper. We give the city council some books at a city council meeting. And then it comes down to, and I hope the heck that the Argus leader is wrong, that I, as a taxpayer, did not pay for these books that you guys got. And if I did, I would like to see that money paid back to the city and then have the mayor take it out of his pocket and pay the city back and state, this is my gift to you, not the city's gift to you, because I did not authorize you guys to get any books. And if I wanted to be a millionaire, I'd be reading that book too. But we got to realize in Sioux Falls and in South Dakota, we have more people that are struggling. And we got to stop thinking about the millionaires that we're going to try to make. We got to think about the people that are struggling in Sioux Falls. That's where I'm at. Mr. Tinga, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And just so you understand, the book is not on how to create a millionaire. The book is on how to become more prudent with your dollars. The, the book was presented to the city council in the spirit of trying to make us more prudent, uh, try to gain more value with our taxpayer dollar, to try to find more ways to save versus more ways to spend. Um, I, I certainly appreciate your commentary, but I'd urge you to read the book. I think you'd find great value in it, and I think you'd also understand why it was a good book for the city council and the mayor to have. It was done in the spirit of trying to become more prudent with your taxpayer dollar, not less. But I will take your, uh, your counsel under judgment. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Stenga. Any other good folks out there that would like to speak to the council? Yes, please. Sir, if you just state your name, please. Thank Hi. you. My name is Brad Hall, and I just want to make a comment about this casino on the border. I just want you guys going forward to ask yourself one question. What did South Dakota do to make Iowa so angry? I just want you to think about that going forward. <clears throat> Mr. Hall, would you, would you mind stating that again? What, what did what South, South Dakota, Dakota do that made Iowa so angry? <clears throat> There's obviously a battle war or a border war going on here. And uh, I, I think we have to ask ourselves, what did we do to provoke this and cause this? So just kick it around going forward. Yeah. Councilor Ex Rolfing. Explain, explain yourself a little bit. Well... <clears throat> I got Richard Longworth's book over here, The America in the Age of Globalism, and in that book, he talks a lot about politicians and states trying to steal and poach businesses and people from each other. Now, it's obvious that this is going on in our community to, to a large extent, and uh, there's a good reason why they put that on the border there. We've got to ask ourselves, what did we do to provoke such an act? You know, so. and I would agree with you. If I was the I, I, Iowans, I would uh, I would look at that and say, we got a diamond over there, and there's a lot of business there, and I think that would be a great place to put it, and I think we have a very good challenge on our hands to turn around and make lemonade out of lemons, and I think that's something that we're going to be doing. So uh, why don't you help uh, by, uh, instead of um, we... We don't necessarily need to be part of the problem. We need to be part of the part of the solution, and we'll come up with a solution uh, by uh, by coming up with a good idea of how to get those people from from that casino over to Sioux Falls to uh, to be part of a uh, stay be, stay here uh, to shop here to eat their dinners here. Uh, you know, do all kinds of good things here. Well, so there's all kinds of things that can be done here. To, could to, I just uh, simply ask then, uh, uh, simply going that method, isn't that just a negative business model in practice? Well, sure maybe it it's something that was forced on us, but uh, again, it's making, uh, making well, then you lemons got, out of, lemonade out of lemons. You got retaliation, act, retaliation, act, retaliation. That just confirms Richard Longworth's thesis. I don't know. Maybe. <clears throat> and this, but We'll see what it's, happens. it's not a positive business model. And, and you know, uh, we can respect Steve Forbes and his endorsement of Sioux Falls going back the last 20 years. But anyone who understands business models know that there's a negative or there's a dynamic side and a static side. Having low taxes and low services 
certainly is a good static model, but it also has to be complemented with a dynamic model, and that is attracting young, talented, entrepreneurial people. And I don't see that in this state. I certainly don't see it in this town. When I ask elderly people, why do we get a 3% turnout on school boards? You know what I uniformly get from almost every elderly people? We don't care. We just don't care. I've never seen this level of apathy in any community that I've lived in, ever. Mr. Hall, thank you very much for your comments. Uh, any other comments tonight from the City Council? Or for the City Council? Well, again, I'd like to thank you for making your comments. Uh, some of the things that you hear occasionally are, are they're not, uh, you, you don't want to hear them, but, but you take them. And that's one of the great things about the City Council is that they were, uh, uh, they were elected they ran in the spirit of representing everybody, whether they agree with you or not. Uh, they they want to represent you, and they're going to do the best they absolutely can to represent you. So, again, thank you all for, for your commentary tonight. Let's move on to the uh, regular agenda items. Why don't we start with uh, uh, item number seven, please. Okay, and I will read items seven and eight before action is taken. Um, item seven. Uh, renewal of the 2010-2011 package malt beverage license for Wang Enterprises Incorporated Kings Mart to be operated at 4200 West 41st Street. And item eight, a special one-day liquor license for SKK LLC Copper Lounge to be operated at the First Avenue lot number 1, 110 South Mall Avenue on August 15, 2010 for the summer giveaway party. Thank you. Could I get a... Uh a motion uh, and, and a second, please, on, on these two items. So move, Anderson. Second, Litz. It's been motioned by Councilor Anderson, Jr., seconded by Councilor Litz uh, on item number seven and number eight to. Lori, would you mind speaking on these two items, please? Sure. Lori Hogstead with the City Attorney's Office. Item seven is, is a renewal that came in just a little bit late, but they did meet the deadline. And so the request is to renew that license for Wang Enterprise. And then we have. A, Another special one-day liquor that uh, came up after my last deadline, so I was able to get that in in time for their event. Any other questions I can answer? Hearing no other questions or comments, uh, could we vote on, on items number seven and number eight, please? Council members Rolfing? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Entman? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Litz? Yes. Thank you very much, Councilors. That passed eight to zero. Now move on to item number nine. Item number nine is a second reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property at 816 South Coville Avenue from the RS2 Residential District to sub-area A of the Sanford USD Medical Center Plan Development District, petition number 2010-0616, and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. The Planning Commission recommends approval. Mr. Mayor, I need to excuse myself, please. Thank you, Council Antonin. Thank you. Can I ask for a motion and a second, please, on item number nine? Move to approve. Let's second, Anderson. There's been a motion to approve by Councilor uh, Litz, seconded by Councilor Anderson, Jr., on item number nine. Mr. Cooper, please proceed. Good evening. Again, I'm Mike Cooper, representing Planning and Building Services tonight, along with Dave Loveland. Uh, this is a request by Sanford Health to amend the zoning, uh, they recently have acquired this existing single family residence and they would like to incorporate this into their campus plan development district. There is uh, existing parking to the south of this area and also east across Eucalypt Avenue. Uh, the long term plans for this area would be potentially additional parking uh, as well as maybe other future buildings more long term. And we do have a representative here tonight from Sanford Health if you have any specific questions. Is there any discussion on this item? Councilor Litz. Mr. Mayor, I was here when uh, we changed the zoning for Sanford on this, and as I recall it, this gentleman was just one of the holdouts because the city council carved out a, an exception if you didn't want to be in that zoning, and, and my understanding uh, was that he has passed away and the property has subsequently been sold. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Very good. Councilor Litz, great job. Thank you. Good memory. Very good. Yes. Any further discussion on this item? 
Is there anybody from the audience that would like to t- talk on, on this item tonight? Hearing none, could we have a roll call vote on item number nine? Council members Rolfing. Thanking, uh, Councilor, thanking Councilor Litz for his great memory. Aye. Yeah. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Entman? Sorry, Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Litz? Aye. That is passed seven to zero with one abstaining. Uh, item number 10, please. Item number 10 is an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property at 201 East 8th Street from the RC Recreation Conservation District to the C3 Central Business District, petition number 2010-0614, and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Thank you. Could I have a motion to approve, please, in a second? So moved. I had a motion by Councilor Anderson, Jr., seconded by Councilor Letts. Uh, Mr. Cooper? Yes, this is a portion of the property commonly known as the 8th Street parking lot. It's part of our public parking facilities system. Um, it also includes a portion of the, the downtown river ramp. As we've talked about future redevelopment opportunities within the downtown area, uh, we are initiating this rezoning request for you tonight, not only to bring it into conformance with the current use as a parking structure and parking lot, but also, again, if there's in the future potential redevelopment of this area. This will bring it into conformance as part of the downtown central business district zoning area. Is there any discussion on item number 10? Councilor Letts, please. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mike, uh, you know, as a, I'm very familiar with this property down here. I uh, was a client of Shona, I'm a customer of Shoneman's, but I, uh, I do know that, that that bridge goes across there and comes onto the Shoneman's property, and a lot of people will use that as a passageway, and as this moves along, uh, will that traffic that comes, the foot traffic that comes across that bridge, will that be redirected alongside the river? Yes, there is a plan uh, with the next item that we'll be considering tonight for the continued access for pedestrians on both sides of the river. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Cooper. Mm-hmm. Any further discussion on item 10? Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak to item 10 tonight? Hearing none, if I could have a vote, please. Council members Rolfing? Aye. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Entman? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Litz? Yes. That is passed 8 to 0. Thank you, City Council. Item number 11. Item number 11 is a second reading and ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property at 243, 303, 305, and 307 East 8th Street from the RC Recreation Conservation District to the C3 Central Business District, petition number 2010-0612, and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval. Thank you. Can I have a motion to approve and a second, please? So moved, Entman. Second, please. Present a motion by Councilor Entman, seconded by Councilor Letts on item number 11. Uh, Mr. Cooper? This is the property commonly known as the former Shoneman site. It consists of just over five acres of land area. Uh, a portion of this has recently been announced as a location for relo- replacement of the CNA surety offices along with enclosed parking and as part of their development plan they are showing that they would like to continue to have pedestrian access uh, either at the existing crossing or at a future relocation of that river uh, pedestrian access. Again this is anticipating the redevelopment for CNA surety as well as other future potential development farther to the north along 8th Street and uh, this will bring this property into conformance with the, the downtown central business district zoning. Any comments on uh, item number 11? Any commentary from anybody in the audience on item number 11? Great. Uh, could I have a roll call vote, please? Yes. Council members Rolfing? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Entman? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Litz? Yes. Thank you. That is passed 8 to 0. Item number 12. Item number 12 is a second reading and ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property at 2111 North Louise Circle from the L1 Light Industrial District to the C4 Planned Commercial District, petition number 2010-0609, and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval. Thank you. Can I have a motion to approve in a second, please? So moved, Entman. Second, Anderson. 
It's been a, a motion by Councillor Entman, seconded by Councillor Anderson, Jr., on item number 12. Uh, Mr. Cooper, please. This is a petition by Jim Burma, the owner of the property. It's about 2.5 acres in size. It's located uh, in between Interstates 29 and Russell Street uh, right away, and then it also acts, is accessed along um, North Louise. The owner has indicated that, that they would like to, or he would like to consider in the future a possibility of a campground. Although tonight we're not approving a campground, we are modifying the ordinance that would allow that to be um, petitioned as a conditional use permit in the future. The site currently has a variety of uses, including storage and an office. Uh, there was a couple here tonight asking me about the campground specifically, and I said that uh, tonight that we're just considering the zoning change, that because the conditional use permit is required, that that would be the next step in the process to see a more detailed proposal that, that the surrounding property owners could, uh, could look at. And they were happy with that answer, and they are willing to wait until that occurs. Uh, so again, we're, we're just being asked tonight to consider changing the zoning from industrial to a commercial use, which would be in conformance with, with other uses in that, in that general area. Councilor Rolfing. Uh, Mike, what are the other uses uh, around that uh, facility? Well, you have uh, zoning. It's primarily the... Let's go back to the other slide right there. There. Yes. It's primarily, as I said, tucked in between. On the west side, you've got the interstate right away. Right. And so on the north side, um, you have industrial use. And then on the south side is also more of a vacant open area. There is some residential as you get down closer to Hovland Drive. There's some multifamily down in that multi -family. area. Multifamily. No, that's a that's hotel that's over there. there. Hovland is beast to your west. That's a hotel. Mm -hmm. Yes. West of there. Right. Um, so if we make that commercial, what are the possible uses? Well, again, there's a long laundry list of uses that could be put in there um, by conditional use permit. Uh, it could be retail. The campground is one of those that's not allowed under the current zoning, which is why they're, they're petitioning for that change. But it could be um, light manufacturing. It could be auto repair, uh, auto sales. Those are the kind of things that you would typically see in this type of an environment. And they would have to come back to us or to the, and through us to get permission to do any of those? Well, the conditional use would go to the Planning Commission. And if it was to be appealed, let's say, then it would potentially come to the city council. But it would go through another hearing process. Go through another hearing process. Right. Councilor Litz. Uh, Mr. Cooper, would it, uh, at the planning commission, if it was also a close vote, would it come before us? No, it a, only if it's appealed. But it has to be a majority vote. Otherwise, it would not pass. I know the petitioner's here tonight, too, if you had any more specific questions for him. Any other questions for the city council? Hearing none. Uh, is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak to, to this item? I don't know, Mike, if that couple's still here. No, they left. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, can we have a vote, please, on just, uh, again, rezoning the, the property? It's not approving the, the campground. Correct. Right. Uh, on item number 12. Council members Ralphing? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Entman? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Litz? Yes. Thank you, City Council. That's passed 8 to 0. Uh, item number 13, please. Item 13 is a second reading an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property at South Faith Avenue and East 49th Street from the AG Agricultural District to the RS2 Residential District. Petition number 2010-0604 and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval. Thank you. Can I have a motion to approve and a second, please? So move, Litz. Second, Jamison. It's been a motion by Councilor Litz, seconded by Councilor J Jamison on item number 13. Now, Mr. Cooper? This is a petition by Chuck Moss uh, developing the Diamond Field Estates area. 
which is east of South Dakota Highway 11 and south of 41st Street. This particular area is about 17.8 acres in size. Uh, it would be accessed along West 49th Street, which is on the north boundary of kind of a triangle-shaped area. Uh, the property is currently zoned agricultural. It's part of his overall development plan. Uh, this would be rezoned for future residential uses. Hearing no further discussion, is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak to item number 13? Hearing none, if I could have a vote, please, on item number 13. Council members Rolfing? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Entman? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Litz? Yes. Thank you. That is passed 8 to 0. Item number 14, please. Item 14 is a second reading. An ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, a major amendment, petition number 2010-0602 to Chapter 15.45.070, Plan Development Districts at Northeast Corner of South Sycamore Avenue and East 41st Street, allowing changes in land use as reflected in the revised sub-area regulations and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval. I have a motion to approve, please. So moved. Let's. And a second. Second, Entman. It's been a motion by Councillor Litz, seconded by Councillor Entman on item number 14. Uh, Mr. Cooper? This is a petition by Rounding Enterprises. Uh, it's a portion of the Manifold Acres development, which is north and east of East 41st Street and Sycamore Avenue. Uh, when this original development came to us, the developer had laid out what they had anticipated for future land uses. Uh, this particular action tonight, as I said, is just under two acres um, in size. There's an assisted living facility directly to the north. To the east is twin home residential, and to the south is future commercial or office development. Uh, the applicant is asking us to basically downzone <laughs> this area from multifamily to more single family or lower density residential that would allow twin homes or a maximum of four unit structures. Is there any discussion on item number 14? Yes, Councillor Anderson, Jr. Mike, north of that uh, assisted living facility, there's some wetlands. How's the water table over in this area? I have not heard of any issues as far as the, the development area itself. Uh, I think the, the wetland area, the detention area, is pretty well contained to the boundaries that you see on the map. And I'm not aware of any groundwater issues that we've had with any of the construction in that subdivision. I believe that they probably are part of a uh, sump pump collection system, but I, I'm not sure for, for a fact on that. Council Rolfing? Mike, these would be no more than four plexes, you said? Yeah, that, that would be the maximum density allowed. Maximum density. With this change, uh, right now they could do multifamily under the current zoning. So they're down zoning, down zoning the density based on what they believe is the market for that area. Okay. Any further discussion? Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak to item number 14? Hearing none, if I could have a vote on item 14, please. Council members Ralphing? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Entman? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Litz? Yes. Thank you, City Council. That is passed 8 to 0. Uh, item number 15. Item 15 is a first reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the code of ordinances of said city by rezoning property at 26864 469th Avenue from the A1 Agricultural District to the Zenobi Plan Development District. Planning Commission recommends denial. Can I get a motion to set a hearing and second reading for Monday, August 23rd, 2010 at 710 at the Joint City Council uh, Lincoln County meeting? So move, Anderson. Second, Jameson. Thank you, Councilor Anderson, Jr. and Councilor Jameson. Uh, there has been a motion to set that uh, hearing date for August 23rd for a second reading. Uh, is there any discussion on this item? Uh, Ms. Cooper? This is a, uh, an item that we will be considering as a joint item with Lincoln County. 
we have joint jurisdictional agreements with both Minnehaha and Lincoln counties. This particular request um, is just to the west of the current city limits, and it's about five acres of land area. Uh, the petitioner's name, Edward Zenobi. Uh, there's currently a single family residence on this property, and the proposal or the request would be to modify the zoning to allow this to be used as a, uh, a storage area for RVs, trailers, campers. It would be outside storage is what's being proposed. And one of the reasons for the request is that because of the growth of this area of Sioux Falls, that the applicant believes that there's a need for people to store their vehicles, campers, RVs, and so forth. And so that's the, the concept of this request. Again, it would be outside storage. It would not be within a building area. Um, they're proposing to fence it to put some landscaping around it. At the joint city-county planning commission hearing, uh, we did receive quite a bit of input from neighbors primarily to the east, which are in the Sioux Falls city limits. And they're concerned about this proposed use um, and what impact it might have on their neighborhood as well as the future growth of this area of the city. As a result of the public testimony, uh, the City Planning Commission, with a split vote, recommended denial. Um, one, let's see, I better say that the right way. The City Council, two members voted to deny it and one voted to approve it. The County Planning Commission made a recommendation to approve it. Uh, the way that these joint jurisdictional items work is that it takes approval of both boards to get it passed. And so when you go to Canton, and I just want to remind you that this meeting will be in Canton at the courthouse, um, if, e if either the city council or the county commission does not approve it, it does not go ahead as an approved item. Um, I'll be talking more to the Lincoln County Planning and Zoning Director to try to get a little more understanding of what some of the issues are, what some of the concerns are. Um, but I should just clarify that this property fronts on the Ellis Road, the T. Ellis Road, in between 57th and 69th Streets. That's kind of the general location. And the city limits is right along the eastern property line of this area. So that's kind of an overview of, of some of the issues. And uh, I can't remember the last time we did go to Lincoln County, but unfortunately this one we've got a split recommendation between the city and the county as far as the, what's going to the elected officials. I think the, Councilor Lentz. I think the last time that we uh, went to Canton, uh, Kavanaugh was still on the council. It's been a while. Lincoln County will have their first reading, I believe, tomorrow morning at their commission meeting. Councilor Anson, Jr. Mike, what were some of the expressed views from the neighbors about the concerns about this business? Concerns about um, the impact on property values, uh, what impact it was going to have on future development around it. Um, it's kind of that same issue that we've dealt with recently where you've got an existing residential area and then there's a proposed change next to them. Um, it brings out their concerns. And obviously in this case everybody knows about it and has had a chance to to voice their, their opinions. Is there anyone okay. out in the audience who'd like to speak to this item number 15? What we're doing is we're, yes, sir, please come on up to the uh, podium. Thank you. If you wouldn't mind just stating your name. Mr. Mayor, point I'm of order. Writing. I don't think on. Uh, I'm so sorry. Percentage. We're only doing a second reading. Yes. Yeah, we're just setting the hearing date. But. Yes, my name. Councilor Brown, would, would you mind just educating me, please? I, I believe on uh, when we're just setting a date of hearing, and correct me if I'm wrong, Tamara, that the, the council and the public, we don't do input on that. Is that correct? That's correct. Mm -hmm. But he's here. So it's... Mr. Mayor? 
Yes, Councilor Lutz. You know, I, I and Mr. Mr. Brown is is right on point. But you know, uh, this gentleman has come down here tonight. I don't think he'll be long, and I I would like to know if the council would uh, allow him to speak this evening, or, or if the mayor would. I guess you're the chair, sir. Councilor Brown, are you comfortable I'm with that? Fine with that. Yeah. Any and my apologies mm -hmm. uh, for, but thank you very much for coming to to the okay. Sioux Falls City Council, and we would like to hear you speak. Can I speak? Absolutely, we would like to hear you speak. Thank yeah, you. my name is Dennis Tillman. I'm representing my sister. She's on vacation. They own the five acres beside it, and they have outside storage, and, it, and Lincoln County thinks it looks great. But what happened, there's a couple of developers that want to develop that land. They want to get it for less than what price is worth. And so they went around to all the neighbors, and they got a bunch of negative commitments on it. But Lincoln County has been down and looked at it, and they think it looks great. And it's lined with trees, and I think, I don't know, to me it's a need, and I think it's a perfect location. But so... I'll be in Lincoln County tomorrow to talk. So. so, sir, you are from Canton, or you're from? I'm Sioux from Sioux Falls. You are. In fact, I'm on your build board. I got to meet with you Wednesday. <laughs> okay. So, but uh, no, I'm from Sioux Falls. So, so you are speaking in favor of? I'm favor of my sister because she's on vacation. Yeah. Okay. So, Very good. Any, any questions at all? Just, yes, Councilor Urbanbach. Tell us on the screen which property is your sister's property. Was she north of that? Oh, it's, you said she was next to it. Yeah, there's land that joined it. It belonged to Boatie's Garbage Service. I mean, there was nothing but dumpsters and stuff out there before. I think campers would look much nicer than dumpsters. So, I don't know. That's just my opinion. Okay. Well, thank you very much for making yeah. the efforts come tonight. Thank you. We do need to vote on whether we uh, have a second reading on this item. Uh, so, if there's no further discussion, if we could have a vote on that, please. Council members Rolfing? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Entman? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Litz? Yes. Thank you very much. That is passed 8 to 0, so that means we will have a second reading on Monday, August 23rd at 7 p.m., and this will be in Canton at the, at, in Lincoln County. So if you'd like to uh, speak, we'll, we'll, we'll be there. So thank you very much. Item number 16, please. Item 16 is a resolution declaring it necessary to levy and levying a frontage assessment against the lots, tracts, and parcels of land fronting and abutting upon 21st Street from Phillips Avenue to 7th Avenue in the city of Sioux Falls for the purpose of maintaining, planting, and otherwise improving and caring for the center parkways and boulevard therein. Can I have a motion and a second to adopt this uh, resolution? So move, Brown. Second, second. Buck. Councilor Brown has made a motion to approve this or to uh, pass this resolution. It was seconded by Councilor Urbanbach. Uh, please. Good evening, Mayor, City Council, Kelby Maris with Parks Thanks, and Ken. Recreation. Uh, this resolution would levy assessments on those properties abutting and fronting 21st Street from Phillips Avenue to 7th Avenue. Uh, there are 53 property owners uh, that it will be assessed 85 cents per front foot. And this assessment has not changed since 1998. And be happy to answer any questions. Any questions on this, Councilor Urbanbach? I don't have a question, but I do have a, a comment. I'd like to thank all of these property owners that have put this uh, frontage fee into their their uh, property costs because it's a beautiful area, and I appreciate their efforts. There's smiles around the council. I don't know why, but I, I respect it. Uh, Kelby, whatever you did, good job. If, um, is there, are there any comments from maybe any of the 53 homeowners or anybody else in the audience who'd like to speak to this item tonight? Great. Well, hearing none, if we could have a, a, a vote, please, to pass resolution uh, number 60. Council members Rolfing? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Entman? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Litz? Yes. Thank you, City Council. That is passed 8 to 0. Uh, item number 17. Item number 17 is a report of July 26, 2010, Notice of Transfer of Appropriations Within Major Organizational Units, Memo 1. Reminder that there's no action taken on this. It's just the presentation of a report. Is there any other discussion tonight? Uh, any other comments from the City Council? 
I got one comment. Yes, there. please, Mr. Um, Chair. In my conversations with Mr. Stango the other night, he did come up with something that I thought was a really good idea that I hadn't heard before, and that was uh, another use during the winter time down at Falls Park. He suggested, and something that I think would be low cost. He suggested putting an outdoor ice skating rink at Falls Park. I think that's a pretty good idea. So I thought I'd throw that out to the council, maybe to talk to the Parks Department about. Michelle? It is in the master plan. And Kelby, would you mind uh, letting Don Carney know about this discussion here tonight as well? Thank you, Kelby. Appreciate it. Mr. Stenga, thanks for the uh, feedback. Appreciate it. Keep it coming. Any other discussion by the City Council tonight? Hearing none, if I could get a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. So moved. Litz. Second Anderson. So in a motion by Councilor Litz, seconded by Councilor Anderson Jr. to adjourn tonight's meeting. Uh, hearing no other discussion, if I could have a roll call vote, please. Council members. Yes. Sorry. Rolfing? <laughs> yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Entman? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Litz? Yes. Thank you. That is passed. Eight to zero. Eight to zero. Thank you, uh, Sioux Falls City Council, and thank you, Sioux Falls. Have a good night.